Hello and welcome back to Underlab. Many people's favourite Undertale character is Undyne, and the fact that she's pretty much a badass plays no small part in that. Potentially one of the saddest scenes in the game, if not the saddest of all, is when we defeat Undyne on the neutral route and we see her slowly melting away as she clings to her determination, trying to fight us as she believes in doing so she'll save monster kind. On the genocide route she's filled with fury upon realising your evil intentions, and she really does manage to cheat death and keep fighting you past what she should be capable of. One of the greatest mysteries of Undertale is how this happens, as we know only humans have the ability within the game to reset upon dying. So just how exactly is Undyne able to keep fighting past death? It's time to find out. Undyne is the greatest hero of monster kind. She's beloved and respected by all, and even feared by a few of her fellow monsters. Good examples of this include Papyrus and Monster Kid. Papyrus seems to admire her as much as he is terrified of her, and Monster Kid considers it to be an immense privilege just to be touched by her. So why exactly does she have such a reputation? It could simply be because of her status as the captain of the Royal Guard, which is surely a prestigious position. However, something else worth considering is her title, that of the Undying. Undying simply means lost forever. In other words, not dying. While a more literal interpretation of the word would suggest that Undyne is immortal, I think it's obvious enough in this context what it really means. For whatever reason, Undyne doesn't really care for dying under normal circumstances. We see this happen in two different ways within Undertale, but only on the genocide route do we see the full extent of it. On the neutral route she melts away in perhaps one of the saddest scenes in recent video game history. It's harrowing to think that she keeps on fighting for the safety of monster kind, and to think that we've killed someone who's essentially a hero likely makes many people think twice about not sparing monsters. However, the genocide path is a different story. Seconds before delivering the killing blow to Monster Kid, Undyne heroically dives in the way, taking a mortal wound in the process. It seems like we've beat her before she even had the chance to fight back. Suddenly, in an unexpected twist, unlike on the neutral route, she embraces that undying side of her by becoming one of the strongest bosses in the entire game, debatably second only to Sans. This is by far one of the coolest fights there is in Undertale, and considering that one of the tracks that plays before it begins is called But the Earth Refused to Die, should tell you how much of a big deal Undyne the Undying's boss battle is. Already, there's a hint in the name of the music. Should we complete the genocide path, we learn that our character has lost all morality, and is set upon destroying the world. Therefore, in the genocide path, Undyne embodies the hopes and dreams of not just all monster kind, but of every human being and creature living on Earth. With the exception of Sans, she's the final chance anyone's got at stopping you before you become unstoppably powerful. It's no wonder that she's so motivated to fight you, but still, that doesn't really explain how she's able to keep fighting past what should have killed her. The obvious answer is that she somehow manages to capture some amount of determination before this final encounter. However, we've been told time and time again that the monsters simply can't hold the stuff, and that they'll melt down and fuse together with other monsters if given the mysterious ability known as determination. Certainly, we see this on the neutral route, where Undyne otherwise inexplicably starts to deteriorate before our very eyes, quite like the amalgamates must have within the true laboratory. How though did the determination get into Undyne's body? How is she able to retain it? And how can we do still kill her? Determination of after all grants you the ability to save and reload. And of course, the greatest question of all remains. Why is Undyne able to keep fighting on the genocide route rather than melting? It's almost as if there's two mysteries happening at once. But by explaining one, we should explain the other. Firstly, think about the exact process that happened to the amalgamates that reduced them to the state they're in today. After having fallen down, which we can assume is just a polite way of saying died or dying, Alfie's injected several monsters with an experimental dosage of determination. This resulted in their bodies decomposing before merging with the monsters nearby, therefore making them a single entity, or in other words, an amalgamate. Many players Players make the connection that Alphys has deep feelings for Undyne, as well as being the only living monster aware of the failed experiments within the true laboratory. It isn't a huge leap to assume that Alphys gave Undyne determination in some way in order to prepare her for her fight with the human. I've even seen it speculated that the ice cream producing machine within her lab is laced with determination, and that's how Alphys managed to give it to Undyne without arousing any suspicion. While there's convincing arguments to be made here, I do feel there's several that seriously undermine this idea. Firstly, we have to remember that Alphys isn't really your typical mad scientist and she's just someone who made a terrible mistake. She never wanted to create the amalgamates and she was only trying to save their lives. 
However, now she knows the side effects to her experiment, she'd surely never attempt to harness determination again, at least not in the way she did the first time. Why would she inject or feed Undyne with determination, with the knowledge that it will result in her melting down? Perhaps she might think that Undyne has the strength to take the stuff, but it seems like an incredible risk to take, for something that might not pay off. For all she knows, the human might not even pose a real threat to Undyne. For example, if we're on the pacifist route, and so giving Undyne a boost for the fight is entirely pointless. What really makes this seem impossible though, is that you can always just spare Undyne and she'll be fine for the rest of the game. Unless Undyne is uniquely able to retain the determination she's been given, it never seems to affect her outside of when you kill her. Therefore, I believe it's pretty much impossible that Alfie's gave Undyne any amount of determination. Not only will she be killing her friend and potential lover, but Undyne never suffers from the side effects that the amalgamates do if this is indeed what happened. In other words, while at first the idea makes sense, it seems extremely unlikely. Still, while we have cleared that up, the mystery is still at large. How is Undyne able to fight past death if she hasn't received a dose of determination? Well, there's an alternative explanation that ties into how determination itself works. Remember that it's never fully explained within the game, only we know the fact that monsters are made of magic more than they are physical matter, and that's why they can't hold on to determination. We also know that all humans apparently have it, which explains how their souls can persist after death. Undyne is unique amongst monsters for two reasons. Firstly, she doesn't really rely on magic to fight. Instead, she's an extremely capable warrior. Secondly, she's extremely persistent and is desperate to protect her fellow monsters. You could easily argue that Asgore is as good a fighter as her, having trained her. But remember that unlike Undyne, he isn't eager to fight you. In fact, he seems so depressed that he actually wants to be beaten. This likely explains why Asgore doesn't keep fighting past death. Undyne is unique in having honed her physical body her entire life, and because she's driven with purpose. Most monsters are never sure about what they're doing, such as Papyrus who ends up making friends with the person he was supposed to capture, and Asgore who feels a deep sense of regret and guilt about the humans he killed. Therefore, Undyne is one of the few characters like us, the player character. She keeps attacking us throughout Waterfall, but unlike Metaton, she really is trying to stop us. While our goal is to escape, her goal is to ensure that doesn't happen. Few monsters are committed to their job as Undyne is. In fact, she's quite literally the most determined monster of all when it comes to wanting to stop us. It seems therefore that Undyne has tapped into whatever determination really is by having such a clear purpose. She still has the soul of a monster, as it's her body that keeps on fighting and not her soul, unlike humans and boss monsters who can be preserved after death. But for a moment, Undyne is filled with determination, almost like how adrenaline works in real life, rather than having it artificially injected within her. While the exact way that determination works is never explained, Explained, it's clear that history got it wrong. It seems with a good enough reason, a monster is able to keep on fighting. The answer is all in the genocide route. On any other path, Undyne's reason isn't good enough to give her the inner determination needed to keep on fighting you. However, with the burden of not just monsters, but also humanity on her shoulders, Undyne reaches her full potential and becomes the true hero of the story. In conclusion, the true nature of determination may be unclear, but because Undyne is so desperate to stop you, it manifests within her despite her being a monster. Undyne is scary proof that monsters are capable of what humans are, but thankfully she's also a symbol of hope who inspires monsters everywhere. It seems that more monsters just need to believe in themselves. Undyne is living proof that the monsters have always had a shot at getting back to the surface. Still, it's a good thing that the humans showed up when they did, so the monsters could be freed without more violence, as I've no doubt that Undyne's solution to things would be a little more physical. Of course, Undyne is also the source of many more mysteries, such as where her eye went and whether she tastes of sushi, which I may tackle another time. Now, before I unintentionally make another fishing pun, be sure to tell me what you think in the comments and if Undyne is your favourite character in Undertale. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Try not to get impaled on the Spear of Justice, and I'll see See you next time. Before I go, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to my patrons, my head scientists Asgore and Shee, Cameron Vihill, Kay Jensen and Sophronius, and my underlab scientists Crystal Sleet, Nicholas Ducks, Armin Arla, Marisa Ray, Corey Kidwell, Yushio Coroni, Sarah Wydra and Emily Gatewood. Thanks to the generosity of every name you see here, this channel is able to keep going. If you enjoyed this video, please consider checking out the Patreon link below, as well as the video that explains why I'd so massively appreciate your contribution.